All right, this is, it is um, February 19th, and this is our coaching call. So I know, Eileen, I'm glad you could pop on because I know you really had a lot of questions about this, and I want to keep this more open Q&A for you guys about coaching. Um, the one thing I will tell you, though, I have noticed is I company-wide, there are a lot of new stylists that are kind of stalling with booking trunk shows, and I think that too much information is not always better. So I do think that we're starting to see people book shows now, but I think that simple, 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 simple is the message. Help get them launched, help them bring along a buddy, help them look at their calendar and find four dates over the next four weeks that work for them, you know, keeping it super simple. So don't just, I know it's so, every time you see something great and we're tending to do this in Mavens too. And I'm just as guilty, like throwing every time I see something great, I throw it at you guys. More is not always better because sometimes when people get too much information, they're likely to do nothing. Um, so that's definitely kind of my theme right now for coaching is just baby steps. I think a lot of you saw the quick video I did this morning about the associate stylist. That's the kind of message. It is simple, easy. You do this, you do this and look at this big reward that you get. Um, those little kudos. Danielle really talked about this morning that the smartest thing we can do this week is kudo all the behaviors we want to see. So really shining the light on people who are booking trunk shows right now. Really shining the light on people who are earning product credit right now. Really shining the light on people who are sponsoring right now. So every action you see in your team that is good, shine the light on it right now. Publicly, on their personal page, on the team page. Really kudo, 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 because that is going to then drive the action of others. So that's kind of our top coaching priority this week is shine the light, shine the light, shine the light. Building a new stylist or even old stylist confidence that they're doing so much right goes really, really, really far. It's probably one of the most important parts of being a coach is, is reinforcing the behavior that we know is going to help make them successful. So... That's kind of my big takeaway is keep it simple and lots of kudos. Um, and then, you know, kind of highlight what we want to track towards. So what are some of the coaching questions you guys have? Kelly, I just want to say that with Linda, she, it was, she was a wreck. She thanked me. She said, thank you. You know, she thanked me and she's now sort of getting to a flow. Like I said, she's already booked another trunk show for beginning of March and she's looking for her buddy and, um, it was really hard, but she thanked me. So I did, I gave her support. I was there for her and I said, you can do this. And I really listened to what you told me and what everybody else was saying. So I really feel like she could really have a team there. And I think she sees that possibility. So I'm excited for that. Um, I have a question. If, you know, say my sister has a team underneath her, a person underneath her, but my sister is like kind of flexed out right now. Can I try to get, talk to her and, and see if I can get her momentum going? That's under, you know what I mean? Like, oh, absolutely. Your entire downline is your team. So whether someone's directly under you or not, um, you really want to treat your whole downline as your own personal team. I always say, especially down to your next star. So like once you build a, a good, strong, independent star, um, you're going to do more coaching them and then they coach their downline. But the absolutely everyone in your personal generation, which is for you, everyone on your team, you should treat like they're your own first line stylist. Okay. Yep, because you are going to have plenty of leaders that are plenty of teammates that flex in and out. And you want to think of your downline as almost being like your personal recruiters. Like you want them bringing in people left and right, even if they don't necessarily want to coach or even if they don't necessarily know how to coach. Like the more people they're filtering into your personal generation, the more people you have to work with that might be your next great stylist or leader even. And then the thing that you can do too is um, – Obviously, like having it be your sister creates a little bit of different dynamics, right? Because it's your sister. <laughs> so depending on whether she's your older or younger sister, you're like, what the heck? Or you're like, oh. Um, but I always like when I'm, if I'm coaching on someone on my second line or even third line, just looping in the people in between me and that, and that stylist to say like, hey, so, hey, you know, hey, Rhonda, me and Kelly are going to hop on a call that, because she wants X, Y, and Z from her business. Do you want to join us? And just always inviting and including because you never know when 
it could kind of light a fire under her, like, wait a second, what's Rhonda doing? I should do that too. And like, maybe I should book a trunk show. And sometimes it can really work. And if not, like, then you don't have to have any of that fear of her feeling like, oh, you're like overstepping or, or any of that. But I think the more and more that you set that as the norm, no one's ever going to perceive it as overstepping anyways. Like anytime that someone on my team sponsors a new stylist, I just, I welcome <laughs> as she does. So I've found that that works really well. Thank you. You're welcome. That's really good. Okay, love so, that. Along the lines of the kudos too, um, if they see it coming from someone that's not their upline, it might actually hit home more so than if it was coming from you. It's like me and Kelly talked about this on Friday. It's like hearing it from your mom. You could hear it till you know, she could say the same thing to you for years and years and years, and then you hear it from like a cool aunt or a best friend, and you're like, oh, that's such a good idea. And mom's like, I've been telling you that for years. <laughs> so almost like. They're like, wow, someone else notices me or thinks I'm doing this right. Because if it's you and your sister, you know, that can be like a, a strange dynamic if on a business side of things, or even if you're close to your line ones, um, hearing it from you, they always hear it from you. So hearing it from someone new could be really exciting. Um, to give you an example, I was on, when I signed up, I was on Kelly's like fourth line or something. And she texted me after I hit associate or senior and was like, oh my goodness, congratulations, you're such a rock star. Like, I was like, who are you? Like, you, like, own the company? Like, you're a platinum, like, I don't, this is crazy. Like, this up and, you know, crazy high up leader thinks that, that I'm special. Um, and not that that's what gave me the drive, but that definitely helped give me the encouragement to be like, okay, like, I'm doing something right. Let me keep going. Um, so always, always have those relationships with your second, third, fourth, whatever lines, just so they know that they're seen, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, I sent a little blast out today to anyone who had pretty much zero to 500, which includes me, um, in sales for the month. But I just um, said, you know, like, hey, girl, like, I see you rocking it. Congrats on getting those orders in. I'm so excited. How awesome is this sale? I'm so bummed that it's ending today, but I'm so excited to be able to use it to get to that monthly product credit boost. Like, what are you doing that's working? I'd love to hear your tips. So putting the authority in their hands versus you telling them what to do also gives them a confidence boost that they might not know they needed. Like, wait, she wants to hear from me what I'm doing? Like, I don't know. And then she might say something as simple as, well, I reached out to 50 people or 20 people or I sent carts to five people. And that's an actionable kudos. A, a kudos you can action. Wow, an action you can kudos. <laughs> so you could take that and then run with it and blast that if you wanted to on the page and then like, oh, you know, Kelly did 20 reach outs today and got us an order say, like, that's so awesome. It just opens that conversation up so that those people who look like they're not doing much or might not have, like, these huge lofty goals are at least being included. Yeah, yeah you're so right. Uh, a little bit of kudo goes so far. Avril, what were you going to say? I have a question for you guys. So I have communication has kind of slowed down a little bit for my team, which Kelly knows. If I get them chatting with me, that's my big win, you know? Um, so I'm a little concerned with that. I have, I feel like I've done some of the stuff we need to do. So I'm throwing it out there just in case I'm missing something. So, but generally everybody, I'm working with the workers and a lot of them are sitting at a hundred and something. Um, I did engage them in terms of you know, tell me what the issue is. So not just listening not talking too much and one is doing a reno one she well she's pregnant now congratulations to her and she did reach out to me and said hey I want to get back in again this whole baby thing is messing with my brain but I really want to work at it um I we did we go, we went through focusing on booking and sponsoring we went through making sure your why is big enough you know just reminding them why they're doing it this week, this month. So just narrowing it down to just this month. What do you want to shop for with your s and money this month? That one treat, even if the rest has to go to essential, just that one treat, you know, just to remind them, you know, of why they're doing it to get them to take the actions. We went through ideas on for booking. 
Um, I funneled a bunch of them over to Charlotte's training last night for booking because that's super important. Um, and one did check in, so that was good. I'm just thinking like, what else can I do? Because we know we need to get them to that minimum thousand threshold. You so know, they should get a hundred dollar product credit. Yeah, it, it, and again, Avril, you're doing everything right. Like this is the time of year that I call it banging symbols together. So it's like when you we're coming easing our way back into when our teams kind of come back alive. You know, it's all you know how it's always like this certain times of year, August and September. You're like sitting there banging the symbols, banging the symbols, banging the symbols, reinforcing your, everything you said. You're you're giving them booking tips. You're kudoing their their actions, things like that. But right now it's about making a lot of noise and kudoing the actions that are good. And then they're gonna slowly kind of come back to us. And then of course it's, it's filtering in new people as well. So just, even though you don't necessarily see the results yet, you banging the symbols and making the noise is a good thing. But again, remember what I opened this call with, which is for me, I'm really trying to simplify too, because I know sometimes throwing too much at them like more words to say, more words to say, more words to say, that can be a little bit overwhelming too. So I think just make sure your message, whatever your message is to them, when you're making that noise, it's clean, simple, and then you reinforce it. Um, just so that it's it doesn't feel overwhelming, it feels super doable. But I think that the exact everything you just said, you're doing it right. You're just gonna see the momentum kind of come with it. Um, but I do think leveraging this Today Show video too, this is a good thing for hobbyists. Having that video and challenging them to share that with people, whether they're trying to book a trunk show or sponsor a new stylist, I think just having that national coverage is huge. Um, yeah. um, so one other question, and it might just be the same thing. Has anybody, so I have this young lady who used to be a stylist and she's flexed back in again. And that's my first one. Um, so will it pretty much be the same thing or is there anything that you guys have experienced that tends to be a little bit different to get that person to take action? So, so far we jumped in and I was a little bit, even Jess and I were a little bit more direct because she's been there before. So we were trying to get her to book her style session and get the invitations and everything out even before she signed up because she knew she was going to sign up. That didn't work. Then she did do hers. And she made some errors in hostess coaching. So her first round of biz, her biz launch didn't work out. She didn't have anybody, but she did tell me she recognized where she went wrong. So we're trying to redo it. But we're at that last week. And in my head, it's always the last week. I never come to like next week. So now my question, I know she needs to diversify. You cannot just depend on that, that biz launch this weekend to work out, you know? So I did, like last week, we went through how many different ways can we get to our number? Whether it's 1,000, 2,500, five ways I could get to 25. So yes, I could book mine. Yes, I could do carts. You know, like going through ideas and leaving it to them to come up with one or two more, but I kind of gave them five. So I kind of encourage her to do that. But right now we're at zero. We have one more week. Do you guys feel like there's a different dynamic when you're dealing with someone that flexed in? Um, I honestly think that I think I'm shifting my new stylist training a little bit to be a lot more like direct and kind of like tell them what to do. I think one thing that I've really learned, like new stylist training is a really big area of opportunity for me. It's not my strength at all. I'm a much better coach than I am a trainer because like I'm a very self-motivated person. So I do not understand people who aren't self-motivated. I like really struggle with it. And so, you know, 90% of our team is that, right? They're all those hobbyists that are here and there and in between. And so I have learned that when someone gets started, I cannot assume that they are going to be a self-starter. And I am getting much more into like giving people like bite-sized tasks as like an assignment. Like yesterday, so I have a similar, I have a, a new stylist whose quick start ends on Thursday. She had her launch this weekend. Only one guest came. She's sitting at 89 PQB. So yesterday I was like, okay, make the list of all the people who couldn't come, create a cart, put your five favorite items in there, 
send it to everybody. Tell me when you're done and I'll tell you what to do next. So I'm just giving her assignments and like, like literally just telling her what to do, which is like a total deviation from my, any other type of style that I've ever had. But like, I'm looking at it as this is how it's going to work during quick start because she, she doesn't know what to do. And I can't operate under the assumption that she does. And I think that that's true even with somebody who used to be a stylist, who's now back, or even somebody who's been on our team the whole time. I actually, I thinking of another stylist in mind who was super active like two years ago and then has been really, really flexed out and wanted to jump back in. And she's like, I don't know what to do. Like, I feel really stuck. And, and again, I was like, make a list of, you make your who do you know list of 40 people and send them this message. And I literally like texted her the words to say to like, tell her what to do. And like, you know, of course, at the end of the day, they still have to follow through and take the action. But I'm not like assuming that they know how to do it. So I'm like giving them the tools. And then it's, you know, once their quick start is over, then it will like transition a little bit more into like the coaching less of the training so that it's more of me guiding them through like what getting what they want. But right now, like right now when they're in their quick start, I'm the expert and I'm trying to like teach them how to get it done. Is that helpful? That is. That is, uh, I think I'll probably have to take that approach, not just with her, but with a few of them. Because it and maybe is it's just even like Avril doing what you did and like you brainstormed all these different ideas of different ways to get there and maybe just layering in. And again, maybe you did this and you just didn't like specifically say this, but just layering in, okay, pick one. What one are you going to do first? So that, cause maybe it's like, okay, she has all these ideas, but she's still feeling like scattered because it's still kind of overwhelming. So maybe it's just like honing in on what, what one do you want to do first? Okay, go do that. Let me know how it goes when you're done. And then we'll like talk about how it went. And then you can say like, okay, here's how it went. Now what are we going to do next? So just like doing each step and like guiding her along. Yeah. Yeah, it is helpful. I think you're right. It's that I did that, but I think again, just trying to narrow it down and trying to get their focus to just take that one action, move on to the next and such. So I will try it. I think it'll be valuable for all of them, not just for her. So that's why I'm filing it away that I should, I'll probably start it today actually. Yeah, I love the advice that it's bite size. So it's not, I'm gonna tell her everything she needs to do and now she needs to go out and do it. It is, okay, let's try this. Okay, analyze it. Let's try this, analyze it. And just, and then super kudos to those things Ash does it to make a really big deal when she takes the action. Like that. And I can, like, I can piggyback a little bit on that because I have, uh, I have a group of a stylist that I sponsored in January and Charlotte's like 100% like hit the nail on the head when it comes to like 90% of them need like, hey, this is what you need to do this is super easy follow these steps and then like I told that to my self-starter girl who I didn't know was a self-starter at the time and she's like oh I already did that like 3,000 days ago like so I feel like you're gonna find those people that are self-starters and you don't necessarily need to tell every little piece to but you do kind of yes have to have that assumption that people are coming into this like okay, I'm going to be given like a laundry list of things that's going to work for me because they work for 80% of the company. And like you and I both know that if you get creative with it, you have a lot more success, but uh, they, they definitely need at least in their first 30 days, 60 days, those, those tips for sure. So good job, Charlie, because that's exactly what was on my mind. I and can now you know that one person you're like, let's be best friends and talk every day. <laughs> like you I understand you. <laughs> so I yes, somebody gets it. <laughs> um, so I, I can think about once you've done all those things you just said, Charlotte, and you have <clears throat> literally told them what to say and they still don't do it. Where do you go from there? You're like, peace, have a nice life. I'm just like kidding, but like, like I know. I'm like giving up on herself, and so I'm not really sure how to even be supportive because I'm like, I've 
I've just told you everything to do. I've literally, God bless you. God bless you. I've given you all the things to do. And she, like, I haven't heard from her in a week. I've texted her four times and called her twice. And Kelly, she was here last week. You saw her. And she's like, oh, okay, I'll have my launch next week. I haven't heard from her. And she's deleted everything she's posted on her personal Facebook that had anything to do with Stella and Dot. So I'm afraid she's about to pull out. <laughs> so Megan, Megan gave me advice this morning. One thing she's doing when she's reaching out to new stylists is the ones in your situation are, what's holding you back? Ask them what's holding them back. And then the fears will come out. And then you can you can address those fears. But that I think it's just a really honest way of saying, okay, so what's holding, and I know this is what your goal was, what's holding you back? Let's let's talk about it. And then just open that discussion and see what they say. Because that's when the fear is going to come out. And Chances you, are she's either scared or embarrassed, and she doesn't want to let you down, which is the, so funny. When I heard that the first time, I was like, she doesn't want to let me down. Like, what? Like, I'm not getting any of this. It's her stuff. Like, why would she not want all these bonuses? But they're only reference to sell and dot is through you maybe yeah. so you know they decided to join your team they have a connection with you they see your successes they might be comparing that against themselves or they might think i'm not good enough or what was i thinking how come i got into this and without vocalizing that to you it's hard to notice what they're thinking obviously but if they're not i guess it's different with your girl because she was gonna plan her launch and now she isn't but um to kind of piggyback on something i guess charlotte said um, oh, I was trying to thought. Sorry, guys. Well, oh, I you can't, you can't want it for them. You know, like if they're gonna say, I'm gonna do this thing, I'm gonna do this thing, I'm gonna do this thing, and you give them all the tools and they don't do it, well, they're just showing you that it's not on their priority list right now. So you cannot let it destroy your time and take up your energy because you have to move on to the next. Like if you're having a hard time with the girls in your team, like sponsor new <laughs> and use that energy to fuel you and fuel you and keep coaching your new girl publicly enough too for everyone to see and being like, okay, so, you know, I'm not the only focus here or there's not like, I don't know. I'm talking in circles. Kelly, take over. This is what we're talking about. Right. One thing that I've really noticed is like, especially people who are newer to sponsoring, you kind of like put it on you that if they're not successful or if they're not taking actions, it makes you feel like you're a bad sponsor or a bad coach. And I think like lo just looking at it from a bird's eye view, the statistics show us that like 50% of people who join are not going to do anything. And you can look at that and be like, wow, that's really kind of depressing because that's not like a lot. <laughs> but I think it's encouraging to know that like, you know, you treat everybody the same and give them that same training and treat everybody like they're going to be the next star stylist. But like, you can't, you can't want it more than they do. So sometimes what I do too, like I, I have never thought about that wording of, um, what's holding you back. I really like that. But what I also do too, is I just like spell it out for them in black and white. Like your first 30 days is up on this day. If we get to this amount by then, this is what will happen. If you don't, this is what will happen. What do you want to do? And just like literally putting the ball in their court and it has nothing to do with it. But what happens for me is just like, if you don't do this, you're going to get charged another hundred dollars. If you do, you're going to get like $500 in free jewelry. And, and all this stuff. what do you want to do? And if they, if it, maybe they don't care and they're just like, you know what? I'm going to get charged that hundred. And then you just got to like, let it go and talk to somebody else. You know? That's exactly what one of my stylists said. She was like, I mean, this is fun, but like, I mean, if I get charged the extra, I mean, it's still a great deal. It's fine. <laughs> I'm just like, oh my God. Yeah. I have this other girl who's like, like at 177 PQB uh -huh. and she's, her quick start is nearing. Like it's definitely time to do something. And she's like, I can't afford this. And I'm like, okay, well girl, let's, let's dive in. What have we not checked off the list? What have you not? And she's like, I've reached out to every single person I know. And I'm thinking, okay, I've been doing this for three and a half years. And I've, I haven't reached out to every person that I know, but okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> she's like yeah. you can keep talking and like giving them encouraging words and words to say and all this stuff and kind of like tag them with maybe somebody who's a little bit like, more, more like maybe like on the same track that they are like in their quick start but at the same time if that person's negative and she's okay with like the bare minimum you don't want that other person to be like okay with the bare minimum and like have like a negative you know downfall either so 
just try and like talk to people one-on-one, -on -one, especially if they feel, especially if you group people up and you feel like somebody's contributing to like negativity or something. Um, Cause I had to like separate a stylist and be like, Hey girl, let's, let's talk about what's going on. And then she hit a quick start, but like, I think she was like, so bombarded by like all of the kudos and the announcements and stuff. And I would kudo her like when she'd get a sparkle set order, but you can't like always assume that everybody's this exact same. I love that. That's great advice. And Eileen, I know you've got a question you've been burning to ask. What's, what's going through your Well, mind? I just, I totally relate to what Avril said earlier about um, having a stylist who kind of wants to just maybe do this just one way or be a one trick pony. So my new stylist really just wants to run an online business, which if you've been doing this for a couple of years and you've got a giant list of customers and all of a sudden you need to start running your business online, that's, that's very plausible. But to start out that way, we all know it's really difficult. Um, so I've been working hard to kind of make sure she knows, you know, the best way to start her business is to have a launch in her home, get her friends over, have them see it, you know. So I got a hard no on that. Absolutely not. I'm not doing that. Um, she feels like she lives in a rural area where no one's going to come out. She lives maybe she said like 30 minutes from where a lot of her friends live from where she works. And she just doesn't think they're all going to drive out to her house on a Thursday night or Sunday morning or what have you. So we went over that a couple of times before I decided to take her hard no and move on. So um, she launched online last week. She made three or four sales for like $200 maybe. Um, and she's, maybe 20 days into her uh, quick start. So her, you know, we kind of had a, a meeting last week where I was kind of like, okay, where are you at? Let's hear how you're feeling, like what's going on. And, you know, she kind of was just basically like, I feel like a total used car salesman and I am totally, you know, distressed over this. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God. Okay. So I guess I'm, I'm kind of caught between teaching her that you really can't be a one trick pony, especially at the beginning of this business. And I'm, I'm caught between that and also kind of backing off Kelly, like you said, because maybe I've been feeding her so much information at this point that she's overwhelmed. Um, and I'm just kind of walking the line of how much to reach out and how much to pull back and, you know, how much to kind of, keep pushing in the direction of how I know she can be successful. Yeah. I think answering, let her, let her get her fears out in terms of like, I feel like you use car salesman. That's a fear you can absolutely answer. You can say, you know, a lot of that is about your own mindset. So if you just switch the way you think about it, if you feel like you're a used car salesman, people are going to feel like you're a used car salesman. If you feel like you're offering a great service and a product that you truly love and you know, they'll love too then you'll feel like you're providing a great service. So just be like that small and just be like all of us, that's just a fear reaction. All of us when we're doing something new and we feel like we're learning, um, it's really easy to kind of let the fear start talking or that one negative Nelly friend, it's like, you're doing what? You can't let, like look at Senator Jessica's video that she's doing today show. Like, are you gonna let the, the, the negative Nellies tell you kind of what you can do and what you can't do? Um, so I think giving her a little bit of that psychological piece, that's so important because so many stylists, you guys, they back off because one person has made a comment to them. One person. So that's why when you open or when you say what's holding you back, you can get a really good, honest answer. You're like, well, you know, my best friend actually said blah, blah, blah. And so if you can talk them past that and let them understand that that's just going from a place of insecurity with that friend and that people really don't think before they speak and they just kind of, you know, say whatever it is that would be their own fear about it, um, it that, that you can help them work past that. Um, but I like the idea of what some of the, like Avril and some of the other girls were saying earlier too about um, offering her, if she's determined not to do it in person, offer her other things outside of just the online trunk show. So the sharing of the bags, the doing the Facebook live, showing the five essential looks, like give her um, like a handful of things and say, okay, what feels authentic to you? What feels fun to you? Like we want to make this fun. We want to make this something you enjoy. So like which of these things is, is it aligned with how you see your business going? 
because like I said, you're so right. I always really push that first in-home trunk show, but if they're absolutely unwilling to do that, you don't want her just to walk away. So it'd be like, let's just, let's just get creative. Let's try some different things and see what works. Okay. Um, and then really kudo, make me feel about the things that she does right. Right. Yeah. And I, and I've told her, you know, I, after we kind of went through the whole thing about, you know, it's a hard no on any in-home show. I said, you know, I'll, I'll coach this. I'll coach you, you know, to be successful any way that you want to be. And we've gone through a couple of those ideas. I showed her how to share a cart, um, a couple of other things, but I like the idea of kind of just saying, let's brainstorm and get creative and what feels most authentic to you. And I love the, what's holding you back line. So I'm going to do that too. That's kind of how you get the honest. I mean, it's, there's so much, there's so many fears that go through people's heads, you know? And so if you can yeah. kind of push them through that, it, it goes really, really far. But just know you guys, out of my new, I've got four new stylists. One is maybe considering launching now. She says she was just a kidnapper, but she's like, I don't know. I may consider it. And the other one, my yoga instructor is not doing, she's, she's just like, yep, I'm good. I got my discount. I'm good to go. I'll let you know if I ever change my mind. So like, I'm not even messing with that. I'm like, okay, see ya. Enjoy your discount. Move it on to the next people. So just know that you cannot make anyone do anything they don't want to do. I but think it's worth, it's worth saying. Don't to work with them through the phone oh. if they're experiencing the Oh, sorry. I was like, who's chatting? <laughs> sorry. No, I just wanted to just lastly say that it's worth saying uh, for those of us who've been there, but I noticed that there are a few new people on here too. You have to give yourself some grace through it. You have to give yourself some grace because you will, even though I say it now, we, you will go down that rabbit hole of blaming yourself when she doesn't launch and she didn't do the things and thinking like, what did I do wrong? And all of those things, you will. It, it, it's a, just a natural thing. But at some point, give yourself some grace. And I think that's the easiest way to put it in terms of what Kelly said and what Charlotte said and, and um, Victoria in that that's when you get to the place of I can't do it for them. And for me, the best thing to do is double down on your business. Mm -hmm. Because if you're feeling momentum, you're seeing yourself booking, you're seeing your, you know, you're seeing your sales coming in and such, it it's a very fine line. We know we're doing this to be of service to others, at least I am anyway. But you want to make sure your cup is overflowing because then you tend to put a little too much pressure on them. You almost, you know, I, I don't know how to put it. Kelly will probably put it better than me or Charlotte. You're putting it perfectly. I love everything you're saying. Very fine line that if your cup is not full, you tend to put all that stress on them. And what they want is completely different to what you want. Hence the reason why we're here. And some of them are not, maybe not yet. So give yourself some grace and double down on your business and just accept that they will do what they want. To. That's why I'm asking those specific questions because I'm asking within that frame of, I know I kind of make them do what they want to do. So have I opened up communication so they could share with me what they're afraid of? Have I given them ideas, you know, of how to go about it? Cause there's that overwhelm of, yeah, I know these people, but who do I narrow in on? So I appreciate the comment, um, Charlotte. Cause I think that's the next thing I need to do to almost wipe everything clean and then do exactly what you said, offer those three options or five options within in home online or whatever, and then say, what sounds exciting to you? What sounds authentic to you? Oh my gosh. I, that was such good advice, Avril. And I'm watching the face of like the bottom four corner with Eileen and Rhonda and Liz and Michelle, especially kind of some of the, the newer coaches or people who have new people right now. And they are nodding like vigorously. And <laughs> like that, you just like that, that, that totally hit a spot with every single one of them. I can so, I can see it all over their face. So thank you for that. I hung out with Kelly for like all of last season, last fall holiday. So that's the benefit of hanging around with Kelly. So that's all on her, actually. <laughs> I'm like, I feel like I've gotten the best part of my ever today. I just want to like tell you all to talk. Like, I've heard so much brilliant advice today. So I do have one question. I am unmuted. Uh, I know I'm late. I'm so sorry. I was on a call with Megan, and sorry. Um, and if this is already answered, please tell me. Just watch the recording, and I'm happy to do that. I think the biggest 
ever like seriously I was like oh my gosh like I need to give myself grace um I have been feeling a lot of like anxiety with coaching and I think I feel like I'm giving 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 and I'm offering 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 and no one's taking the action and they're just complaining about not seeing results did you guys already talk about this because I'm happy to watch it back um, yeah, I mean, we tapped on it a little bit, but I mean, it's, it's kind of the same thing. Does anyone have any great advice for that? Or I'll talk if not. I think if they're saying that they're taking the action and they're not, that they're not getting results, like I'd be like, okay, like let's dig into that a little bit more. So tell me how many people you've reached out to. Who are they? Let's talk about who they are and like literally try to go through the conversations and you'll probably find out that they've talked to like four people. I mean it yeah it's like literally so predictable <laughs> yeah but then, I, then I get girls that, that like coach too is like just get used to embrace that you are going to be saying the same things over and over and over again I mean like you will feel like a broken record and you'll just say the same things over and over again and it's like kind of cultivating like I mean because like I've heard Kelly say the same thing so much but you're so good at saying it like it sounds like it's like the first time it's ever come out of your mouth of like okay like let's talk about it you know <laughs> and, and kind of cultivating that and making it feel like fresh and individual to that person but like really in your head you're like okay here's this again <laughs> like here's this conversation so but I think it's really really such an aha moment when you have that conversation with a stylist and it it's so like non-confrontational or like non-accusational but it really makes them realize for themselves that they actually aren't putting in the effort that they, they think that they are. So true. Open it up with questions, ask them what they're doing. It's, it's so simple. And it, I mean, because people, the second you ask how things are going, if things aren't going well, they're going to blame it on nobody wants to do anything. Nobody wants to book a trunk show. But like Charlotte said, if you dig into the numbers, you'll find very quickly that it's generally the amount of people they've talked to. And then you can say, oh my gosh, that's the best news. Because guess what? It actually takes talking to 10 to get one. So let's go through and make a list together. Let's go through some different social groups we can go into. And you can start digging in that way. So I always like really put a positive spin on it instead of being like, well, you haven't done anything. <laughs> I say instead like, oh my gosh, that's great news. <laughs> because now we yeah, can. I'm so bad at that. I'm like so blunt. I'm like, well, girl, you have to work. <laughs> <laughs> this is probably why I'm not a good coach. <laughs> oh, you can learn to say things in a way that I always, uh, we're going to get cut off in a second, but the key with coaching is positive, negative, positive. So if you're trying to get deliver some kind of like harder information for someone, reinforce something they're great at, tell them the small thing you can tweak and then reinforce something they're good at it really it helps you with with everybody this is something that when someone's coaching me if they've just highlighted what I'm really good at but the one thing that you we could we could tweak super easily is blah 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 blah, blah. and then and then the thing that but, but but the good news is you're really good at blah blah blah, blah. you know what I mean it just takes it, it you will learn trust me to deliver you will learn to deliver it well it that's takes, what I was gonna say Drew. you're gonna learn how to edit but for me, I, I use the term reframing it in their mind. That's why communication for me is so big. If they're talking to me, it's like a win because now I know what's going on in your head, but I always try to reframe it so that they could see the positive. But yeah, and we all have different coaching styles. Like I would respond to that and then just follow up with exactly what I need to do. But I'm all with the, well, you haven't been working. <laughs> do this, <laughs> right? But everyone has their different coaching languages. That's why I said it, it comes with time. Mm -hmm. So you really have to be patient with yourself along yeah. the way. And this comes on every level too. If you look at this group, look at the people who are getting on the calls. Look at the people who are engaging. Look at the people like these people were all invited to be a part of this group. They applied to be part of this group, but not everyone's going to step up and do the action. So we work with the workers. Yeah. And then you can tell everybody else to have a nice life. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, so really. <laughs> Let's pop off real quick. We're about to get back on. We'll do a quick, our next call was supposed to be on strategy and scheduling. So we'll pop back on and just do a 15 minute working schedule. And then we'll, we'll go ahead and stay on schedule, get back on schedule for the, um, for the one thirty call. So if anyone wants to pop off, we're about to get cut off and then we'll plan.